Hello everyone, I'm here to teach you how to program an LED to blink. Uh, to do that, we're going to need to go over our parts first of all. So I've got a couple of them in front of me right now. So first of all, on our right here, we have the LED. And then I also have on the left here, the Barnabas Noggin. Now, if you have a different type of board that you're using, so say for example, you have an Arduino Uno, that should work just fine as well. So in addition to those two parts, you're also gonna need a USB cable like the one in front of you right now. So 99% of you probably had a blue cable like the one on the screen now included when you bought your board, be it an Arduino Uno, a Barnabas Noggin, etc. Now the USB cable is responsible for connecting your board to your computer, so it's very important. Now in addition to these three parts that I've shown you, we're going to need a couple of other things. One, you're obviously going to need a computer, and you're going to need some sort of programming software to program the LED. I'm going to be using a version of ArduBlock that we have designed ourselves, and a link for that is in the description of this video. Before going into any more detail, I want to dive a little deeper into a couple of our parts. The first of which is the LED. So if you look closely at the LED, you may notice that its two legs are of different lengths. So the LED is a part that prefers to always be facing one way in a circuit. And those different lengths of the legs is trying to tell us uh, how it needs to be oriented inside of a circuit. So the short leg is always going to be connected to the negative side of a circuit. And the long leg is always going to be connected to the positive side of a circuit. All right, so the other part that I wanted to go over in more detail is the Barnabas Noggin. Now, clearly, the Barnabas Noggin is a little bit more complex of a part than the LED. Uh, and I don't want to bog us down in the details. So we're only going to worry about, you know, the things that are going to help us in this project. So the first thing to notice about the Barnabas Noggin, it has two rows of pins. So you should see at the top and bottom, there are two rows of black holes. And those black holes are conveniently made such that you can place a electrical component into them. So say, for example, the LED, its legs could fit nicely into those holes. And specifically, I want to draw your attention up towards the top left hand side, where there are two pins, one that says GND, and the other that says pin 13, or just the number 13. These two pins are where we're going to be placing our LED. All right, we're now ready to get started. I'm going to begin with the LED, placing it into the Barnabas Noggin. Now remember that the LED has a long leg and short leg, which are supposed to represent positive and negative. So we don't have pins on the Noggin that just say positive and negative. So I'm just going to tell you that the two pins I mentioned earlier, G and D and pin 13, are supposed to represent positive and negative in our circuit. With G and D being negative, and 13 being positive. So I'm going to make sure that the short leg goes into G and D and that the long leg goes into pin 13. So I have just like that. Oh, missed one. All right, there we go. So if I, there you go. And lastly, I just need to connect the noggin to my uh, laptop with a USB cable. So I'm going to take a funny look inside here. And the other side of the USB cable is going to go right into my computer. Okay, so with all of that taken care of, we are almost ready to begin coding. And I'm here in Ardublock. So I want to draw your attention to one thing before we actually start coding our board. And I want you to take a look at the top here of ArduBlock. We've got a ton of buttons. It can be a little overwhelming. We're not going to worry too much about all of this. I just want to direct your attention to the select port, select hardware, and select project. So we're going to start with select project. Make sure that it says Barnabas Bot. For select hardware, if you're using a noggin, please select noggin. If you're using an Uno, obviously you would select Uno. And then the port is a little more difficult. You'll notice that I have three different ports. Now port refers to the place on your computer that your 
a USB cable that has the noggin attached or the Uno attached if you're using an Uno is plugged into. So you'll notice I have three comms. Uh, that's because I currently have three things plugged into my computer. So I have the Barnabas noggin. I also have a camera and I also have a uh, microphone. So all of these things are plugged in and only one of these things represents my noggin. So I need to do a little bit of detective work to figure out which of these is the noggin. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to unplug. Well, actually, first of all, let's just keep keep our eyes here and notice that I have COM3, COM7, and COM8. All right, so like I was about to say, I'm going to go ahead and take my USB cable on my computer side uh, and unplug it. So this is going to be the USB cable that is specifically attached to the Barnabas noggin. I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. I'm going to go back to select port, and I'm going to notice that one of those comms is now missing. So COM3 is now missing. So clearly COM3 represented my Barnabas noggin. So now I can go ahead and plug this back in. And you'll notice that the LED will probably blink for a little bit uh, when you first plug it in. That's completely normal. Uh, don't worry too much about that. I'm going to go ahead and go to port. I now know that I should select COM3 and we're ready to roll. Okay, so now we can actually begin programming. You should have these four tabs on your left hand side of the screen. And you can click on each of these and it will open up a little menu with different blocks in them. Now I want to start with the control tab and I want to start with the loop do here. And you can go ahead and just uh, click and drag it into what we would call our workspace, this big gray area. Now the loop do is very important. As a matter of fact, it is the most important block in your code. Your code will not work without a loop do, nor will it work if there is more than one loop do. So there always needs to be exactly one of these things. Now the loop do is responsible for actually running your code. So anything that we want our noggin to do is going to have to be placed inside of this block. If it's not placed inside of this block, it will not happen. In addition to that, you may have guessed by the name loop that it will do whatever um, blocks that are inside it, whatever instructions are in there repeatedly. So if it has two instructions in there, it'll do those two instructions and it'll do them again and again and again and again until your noggin runs out of batteries or your computer dies or something along those lines. So we have our loop do. Next, we need to go into the lights tab. And we've only got one block here. We've got LED. I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag it and place it into loop do. Notice how the loop just kind of expands to uh, swallow that entire block. Now notice that LED has two things attached to it. So I have this pin number and then I have this hexagon that says one and then I have status and then this sort of oval that says on. So looking at pin number first, I can actually change this number to whatever I would like. But I do have a specific number in mind I would like to change it to. So this pin number is supposed to represent the actual physical pin on our noggin that we're going to be affecting. So because our LED is on pin number 13, I want to make this 13. If I were to make it some other number, then we would not be affecting our LED. Now status, some of you may have already figured out what this means or may have guessed. I have two options. I have on and off. So this is essentially turning pin 13 on, which because there is a LED plugged into it, that would turn the light on. Or I could turn it off. So I obviously think that turning it on is a little more exciting, so we're going to go with that. All right, so this is our first step. We're just going to try and upload this very, very simple code onto our noggin and see if we can get the LED to light up. So I'm going to go over to Upload. I'm going to click on it. And now at the bottom of the screen, the log, I'm waiting for it to turn green, which it has. And right after it turns green, we notice that the LED turns on. Fantastic. So now I think I want to do this again but I want to turn the light off. 
So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to set that to off. And now because I want this new code to be what the noggin is doing, I need to upload again. So I'm going back up to upload, clicking on it, looking at the log. Hopefully it turns green. It has, and I see the light is off. Great. So now the next step, the slightly more intricate thing to do would be to get our LED to blink. So I would like it to turn on and off repeatedly. So how am I gonna do that? Well, I think the first step would be to get another LED block. So I'm gonna get another LED block. I'm gonna put it right underneath the first one. Notice that the loop once again is growing to, to fit my needs. And it makes some sense that if I have two LED blocks and I say one is off and one is on, that I should get the LED to turn off and on. And then because it's inside the loop, it'll happen repeatedly. So that makes some sense to me. However, the LED is still on pin 13. So I want both of these to say pin 13. I want to be turning that specific pin on and off. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a try. All right, what do I see? Well, there was some blinking at the beginning, but that was more due to the code being uploaded. And now I see just a solid blue light. So clearly I've made some mistake here. So it's a little hard to understand uh, why the light is staying on, but I will go ahead and tell you that if we were to slow things down enough, we would potentially actually see the LED blinking. So the reason we don't see the LED blinking is because these two commands, the off and on, are being repeated so fast that we're unable to see it. So what we need to do is we need to find some way for the off command to happen for a longer amount of time. And the same thing with the on command. So I would like the off and on to both be happening for some long period of time instead of just doing this as fast as the Barnabas noggin is able to. So right now it's flipping between off and on incredibly quickly and to us that just appears that the light's on. So if I go over to control, there is a block called wait and wait has a unit of seconds. So it says right now, wait one second. So if I put this here, so notice I grabbed two of them. So I put one after the off and one after the on. So what this is going to then do, hopefully, is it's going to have the LED turn off and it's going to wait one second before it turns the LED on. And then it's gonna wait one more second before it repeats this whole process. So let's go ahead and upload this and see if we're on the money. So upload. Look at the log, green, what we got going on here? Awesome. So I see the LED blinking now, fantastic. So for those of you at home who want to experiment a little bit more, these numbers can be changed. So let's say I wanted to blink this faster. So instead of one, I would say 0 0.5. So that's half a second and I could potentially get my light to blink twice as fast by doing this. That's a bit faster. So why don't you guys go ahead and experiment with that at home and I will see you guys in the next video.